Okay, in this video I'd like to talk about the Einstein coefficients or relations for lasers. And Einstein back in the day, he, he I suppose he was analyzing systems and solid state systems and so on, and he predicted that uh, he predicted constants. And he didn't know what they exactly were, but he predicted that they would be found. And quantum mechanics has allowed us to calculate these. But as for the three the three coefficients he's spoken about are B12, B21, and uh, A21. So just to explain what these are, this is 2, 1. Okay, so B21 is the probability of stimulated emission from level 2 to level 1. B12 is the probability, probability of stimulated emission from level 1 to 2. And A21 is the probability of spontaneous transition or emission from level 2 to level 1. Notice that spontaneous transition can only happen from a, a, an excited state to, um, we'll say, a lesser excited state. So it must be a downward transition. And the type of thing we're talking about really here is, I suppose if you want to be very crude, you have a Bohr model of the atom, where you have the electrons orbiting around it. We have an incident photon, like this, which exactly um, matches the energy level, we'll say h nu from, we'll say, two different orbits. An electron gets promoted up there by absorbing the photon. It is now, the atom is in an excited state. and by putting, by, let's say, having another photon, not incident on the atom necessarily, but near it, it can it basically encourage the electron to de-excite back down, emitting another photon. And, of course, you have the emitted photon and, we'll say, the nearest or emitted photon. And, as a result, you'll have two photons. So, you can imagine if you have, you know, a, a number of excited electrons, you're going to have a big pile of um, radiation being emitted, all coherent and in phase and at the same time. So that's how you get your laser beam. So that's spontaneous emission, okay? And the, excuse me, I take that back, that is stimulated. And spontaneous means it just happens. And I suppose that's really down to the uncertainty principle, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But like I said, you have spontaneous and you have stimulated. All right, so stimulated is, is, is by uh, some form of, um, stimulated is by some form of photon or some, some bit of light or some bit of pumping anyway. All right, so let's just talk about the energy density per unit frequency interval. So the energy density is the amount of energy in a unit volume. So if we're talking about this per frequency interval, I'm going to say sometimes people use U sub nu, that would be the energy density per unit frequency interval. I'm just going to say it's actually rho of nu because that's something we're probably familiar with. And that's going to be proportional or equal, excuse me, to the number of photons per unit volume having a particular frequency. So I'm going to call that capital N. So this is the number of photons that uh, per unit volume having a particular frequency. And you need to multiply, of course, by the, the energy of these particular photons. So this is the energy density uh, in a per unit frequency interval. So, what if we look at the probability of a transition? So I'm going to say that there is another coefficient, I'm going to call it W, which is the probability of a transition. Alright, and I'm going to tell you, and it should make sense to you, that the probability of transition is going to be equal to the energy density times the probability of transition from level 1 to level 2. Okay, so this is going to be the probability of, of an entire transition. So We'll say this is the probability of something being emitted. Okay, that's B12 from we'll say a higher or lower to a higher energy level. So if you multiply that by the energy density or by the energy density, which is uh, taking into account the number of photons available to make a transition, we have the probability of a transition occurring. So let's look at uh, what is the downward transition rate. So the downward transition rate from we'll say energy level two to energy level one. So let's think about that. It's definitely going to involve the population density in energy level 2. And if we look at the stimulated emission of photons, we're probably going to look at it's going to involve the energy density and the probability of a photon being emitted going, or being um, emitted going from level 2 to level 1. But that is the stimulated. So we need to account also for the spontaneous, which is going to be very simple, and it's um, N2 times A21, and this is going to be spontaneous. All right, so that's pretty straightforward stuff, and it, that should make uh, that should make a bit of sense to you. It's pretty intuitive. So what if we look at um, what another thing? Excuse me, which should be quite intuitive. 
is that in thermal equilibrium in thermal equilibrium the number of upward transitions is equal to the number of downward transitions that 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 should be um, that should be kind of a natural thing for you to 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 think so i'm telling you that it is the truth so um just accept that and we shall move on from there so let's put a bit of mathematics onto this let's look at the number of upward transitions so this of course can only be stimulated as i said that spontaneous transitions can only happen going downwards so we're going to have the energy or the excuse me the population density in energy level 1 multiplied by the um, the energy density times the probability of a photon go or a photon being absorbed and allowing um, we'll say a transition from energy level 1 to energy level 2 and then that's equal to of course what we spoke about a moment ago which is the probability of a transition downwards uh, so just bear, bear with me and write this all right so if we rearrange this and you, you, you're going to find that if we, if we rearrange it I'll just do it very quickly I'm going to n1 b12 minus n2 b21 is equal to n2 a21 all right so once again I'm just going to rearrange this we're going to get the energy density being equal to n2 a21 divided by uh, n1 b12 minus n2 b21 now we're going to be comparing this in a moment with the black body radiation so for that reason and you'll see in a moment you'll understand probably in a moment I'm going to divide everything here by n2 b21 and as a result we're going to get that we have a21 over b21 all divided by n1 over n2 b12 over b21 that's a 2 believe it or not minus 1 now if you've done a bit of quantum physics you realize this is looking kind of similar to our uh, black body radiation um, or, or the energy density in a black body cavity so let's look at the, let's just write down the expression for the black body ener um, the, the energy density in a black body cavity okay it's going to be equal to bear with me now and I find it oh actually we're not going to do that yet we're just going to look at both some statistics first so uh, actually I'm going to just I'm going to um, note that if you like but I'm going to I'm going to get rid of it all right so we need first of all to look at a bit of Boltzmann statistics and this is the formula that we need for this n sub j is equal to g sub j that's a j there times n0 e to the minus um, e sub j over kt that's a j that's quite important divided by the sum of g sub i that's an i g sub i e to the minus e sub i over kt and this is the population density at energy level e sub j or energy level j this is the degeneracy of the energy level and we have this usual exponential here which you should be very familiar with so we need to divide of course by all of the energy levels so if we get energy level 1 divided by energy level 2 these factors here are going to cancel out for both of them and you're going to get the following you're going to get g sub 1 over g sub 2 times e to the minus e2 minus e1 over kt that's because uh, when you divide by um, e to the minus e2 over kt you can bring it upwards and making it a positive exponential all right look i'll let you do that that's not particularly difficult so uh, let me think there now this is equal to n1 divided by n2 and it's this factor which we saw a moment ago we saw that the energy density per unit frequency interval is equal to a21 over b21 divided by b12 over b21 n1 over n2 minus 1 so you can see that we need to plug this value in here and I'm just going to do that straight away and what we're going to get as a result of this is that the energy density per unit frequency interval is equal to and equal to a21 over b21 divided by b12 over b21 g1 over g2 uh, the exponential minus one all right now like i said before if you've done a bit of quantum physics you'll know that the energy density in the black body cavity is equal to eight pi h nu cubed over c cubed one over e to the h nu over kt 
minus 1. Now, although this is for a black body cavity, it actually generalizes to cavities in general. So if we compare the two of those, and let you do the mathematics yourself, it's actually very straightforward. You'll find that B12 times G1 is equal to B21 times G2. And you'll also find that A21 over B21 is equal to 8 pi H nu cubed over C cubed. And these are the Einstein relations resolving or coming from the Einstein coefficients. So what you should notice here, first of all, is B21 is the probability of a spontaneous, or excuse me, stimulated transition from energy level 2 to energy level 1. Now that's something we can't measure. However, A21 is something we, which we can measure, and I might actually prove that later on. But A21 is equal to 1 over the, uh, with, over the, uh, what's that, the, the lifetime in a state, which is something we, we can measure. And because we can measure the lifetime, we can measure A21, and because of this relationship, we can measure B21. All right? And also, you should notice here that the, the probabilities of transition are related to the degeneracies. And often, we, we assume that, the, or that the, the, the degeneracies are equal. All right? So, uh, that's all I've got to say about that. I hope you look at my next videos, which is going to be one on the gain coefficient, or proving the, the, the loss or gain coefficient. And um, what's the other one I'm going to do? I just, I think that's, that's it really, I suppose. Okay, so thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.